All right, I want to make a video just to introduce kind of this entire concept and this document. So I'm going to use this document as the main source of everything. Consider it the main frame. Anywhere you want to get, you should be able to get from here. And at the top, I have some notes just kind of outlining the philosophy. But at a super high level, what I'm hoping is I've talked to a lot of people that say, oh, I'd love to learn data science or I'd love to learn R. And I tried and it was really confusing and I didn't get it and it's, it's troublesome. And I've also done that same thing myself. And I've just seen how bad all of the resources out there are. And I think they make a variety of mistakes and there's a variety of problems with them. But I think we can do better and I think we can learn in a better way. And so my goal is to, uh, through this process, learn what's the most effective way to learn data science and the tidyverse and R. And my thinking is very much inspired by this class I took, Data Challenge Lab, where the guy basically said, hey, I talked to people at Google, I talked to people at data science in, in the field, and they say, people coming out of Stanford are bad. And then he, Bill Bierman said, I, I looked at the courses and what's happening is people are just sitting in the back watching a professor code and kind of nodding along. And, and nothing could be a worse education uh, for learning a, a practical skill than to just watch someone else do it. And so, I thought if I provide resources to get you started and you can get active in there and then you you, you have the support and each other to, to work with, uh, you can do really, really cool things. And that's what this challenge lab did. Um, it was 20 hours a week for 10 weeks during the quarter and met every day for about an hour and a half. And it was an amazing opportunity. Problem is it only serves a very small amount of people. It serves the people that are at Stanford. It serves the 20 or so that get off of the application list of about 80. Um, it requires the time and commitment it starts kind of quick so if you didn't have any r or coding background it might be hard and so i want to create something that's a little bit lighter a little bit more inclusive and get confidence for people that maybe haven't coded before or have done a little bit or have used microsoft excel to that end i have a few notes here first of all my goal is to learn how to teach this stuff and to compile really high quality resources the only way i get there is by creating stuff and then getting feedback from folks that are using it. So I would love your feedback. You're actually, while you're learning, you're in a uniquely incredible spot to give feedback because you are the person with the empathy for the learner because you are the learner. The curse of knowledge is all about, it's really hard to have empathy for what it's like to not know something once you know it. So you're in a uniquely good spot that goes away once you get good at something. Suggestions on how to get more out of this. I'll make another video um, I think I'm going to call it how to go about learning right here and I'll post it down here, but I will make another video, which is, I think exactly how I would suggest going about using these resources and you can try that out. You can, you can look at what I suggest, but basically be active, play around, do not just passively watch, view the videos and the articles as a baseline information source to get you started and playing around. And then the most beautiful thing about learning something like this is that you can get direct feedback from the computer because you can say, what happens if I type this? And you can type it and you can hit enter and you'll see what happens. And maybe it's an error. Hopefully it's an error. If it's an error, you can figure out what the computer was expecting, what's different. There's no cost to the computer saying, error, I have no idea what the hell you were talking about. And so there's that. Multiple monitors, I'm kind of obsessed with multiple monitors. I think it makes the process of digesting a video on one screen and playing around with the content in our studio on the other screen, very useful. You don't have to use multiple monitors, you could do side by side or something else, but I think it's really valuable. Um, this is kind of an extreme request. I think I have this dream of you recording your actual experience. So recording you watching the video, recording you playing around in our studio as you're going, talking out loud of, oh, I saw this over here and I thought this would work, but it doesn't work and I'm confused why. So I'm gonna Google this. Here's what I got on Google. That doesn't make sense. Oh, that kind of makes sense. Oh, now I think I need to try this other thing. Let me try that. Oh, okay, that makes sense. So before I thought this function did this, but turns out it actually does this. And basically what you would be doing is vocalizing what you're learning as you're going and using what's called a self-explanation where you either in your head or I'm asking you to do it verbally so other people could hear it self-explain what's happening here and there's lots of good research that that um, improves learning if you use multiple monitors you're going to have a question of and you go on this don't feel like you have to record it i think it would be cool but don't feel like you have to 
Um, but if you use multiple monitors, you can have a question of, do I record the learning content, like the video I'm watching, or do I record our studio where I'm playing around with the content um, that the video is teaching me? Always record you playing around with something if you have the choice. We have the other videos, so screen capturing a video you're watching is a little bit meta and a little bit weird. The other thing is, if you don't want to talk while you learn, that's weird for maybe most people. If you just screen capture your actual, like what you're doing, it might be interesting to uh, have a podcast or I don't know, just a conversation while watching back what you were doing. And you could be like, hey, I could be like, hey, what, what were you doing in that spot? What were you thinking? Do you remember? And you'd be like, you'd say, oh, I thought this, but then pretty soon I'm going to realize this. Okay, where'd you look and how'd it go? And you can have this kind of voiceover. My buddy and I joke that it, it's like QB, John Gruden QB camp, where you look at film of a quarterback playing. You say, hey, when you drop back in the pocket five steps, what were you seeing on your left? What were you seeing on right? And the quarterback says, well, it was a shotgun set. Uh, I don't know. Um, here's some information on how to record if you do decide to get into that. And then down here, I will put kind of links and what I'll call the curriculum. I'll try to list if it's a video or an article or what it is. At the end of things, I'll try to have exercises and solutions and such. The cool thing about Google Docs is I can add additional comments here. For example, I think 3B, this verbs of dplyr article is kind of the best thing that's created. And if you get, can get there, if you can get proficient on 3B, you're absolutely off to the races. So I'd almost view all of this stuff. Well, you're gonna have to do one, you gotta do installing and you gotta get figured out. But I would kind of view this stuff as supplemental and to get you here if you click here and you're like i'm way confused maybe you need to know what a pipe is so you can watch the pipe video quicker maybe you need to know what a vector is so you can watch the vector video quicker but that's it i'm excited to learn about learning and i'm excited for you to learn these are powerful skills and they're really really useful once you get them i think especially in research as it gets more quantitative and any job just these skills are really valuable and i don't think they are as hard to learn as people think Let's see if we can't.